So sharing your kids' time during the holidays can be tough for divorced or separated families. Local family law attorney Molly Sasso joins us now to explain how to make it easier for everyone involved. Molly is a board-certified specialist in marital and family law. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So this the, the holidays are already stressful, right? And then when you're <laughs> trying to figure out a way to amicably share time with your ex-husband or ex-wife, you know, and, and the children and who gets who at what time of year can be difficult. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so there's something that, that you frequently refer to as the plane ticket rule <laughs> if, you know, your ex lives outside of the area. Yes, or even if your ex lives in the area and they want to take a trip for right. Christmas. So what I frequently hear is we have a parenting plan. It says that we exchange at 3 o'clock on Christmas Day. I have the second half of Christmas. We're leaving at 10 a.m. on Christmas morning, and I've already bought the non-refundable ticket. And what do I do now? Because I'm going to have to have this <laughs> uncomfortable conversation telling my ex, hey, I need the kids earlier. Right. <laughs> I'm sure so, that'll go over well. My tips are you don't tell the ex anything. You yeah. ask the ex. <laughs> Good point. And you do it before you buy the tickets. And that's sort of an extreme example. Most people are not going to leave on Christmas Day at 10 a.m. if they have little ones who are waiting for Santa. But still, you never know. Sometimes it's less expensive. Than, and, and and even if right. it's not young children, if it's teenagers, as an example, many people choose to travel instead of exchange guests. Isn't Whatever it? it is, don't buy those non-refundable plane tickets until you have discussed your timeline. Hey, is it okay? I need to go a little early. You know, oh yeah, no problem. Get permission first. Don't buy that plane ticket and then come to your attorney saying, I've got this emergency. You created that emergency. Yeah, you did it to yourself, right? <laughs> right. So then the, the second point is, is and, and this makes sense too, is you, you do have to be flexible despite maybe how acrimonious sure. the, the separation or the divorce was. Sure. I, is that easier said than done? Well, not only is it easier than said than done, but you actually don't have to be flexible. If it weren't for people not being flexible, my kids could not go to college. So yeah. when you don't want to be flexible, you end up in my office. Uh -huh. Or if you have the former spouse who's not being flexible, you end up in my office. Of course, I want people to end up in my office, but right. I, I, I do adoptions and, and, and nice things too. But when you get in these situations where people are not able to be flexible and, and they can't understand why their spouse won't be flexible, and I'll say, you know, how did you act the last time they needed something from you? And then they realize that, oh gosh, if I want flexibility, I need to give, give flexibility. flexibility. Exactly. And at the end of the day, it's the kids who end up benefiting the most, don't they? Because I mean, you have to think about this kind of back and forth and what it means for the children. Kids know when their parents are at each other's throats. And they know when their parents get along really well, despite the circumstances. They know, oh, I've got a new stepmom, a new stepdad, and, and everyone is happy. And I, I, I don't know whether that's the exception or the rule, because those people usually don't end up in my office. <laughs> right. But I'd like to think there are families who can be amicable, even though they've moved on from the relationship. And is there a golden rule? Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the golden rule really is if you flexible. want flexibility, you have to give flexibility. Because how can you expect the other person to do it for you? And I, and I will say, sometimes it's like, if they ask you for something, maybe you have in the back of your head, oh, I'm going to need something from them. Try to kind of horse trade when you know it's coming up. I mean, I, I hate to say you have to think like that, but you have to think like that sometimes. Yeah, we're talking about favors, not the kids, obviously. But at the end of the day, maybe taking a deep breath and saying, you know what, before I respond to that text in a way that I really probably shouldn't, let me go ahead and think about what the impact is on my children. For sure. And also think about, let me see what I'm going to need. Let me think ahead. Oh, hey, I'll be happy to do that for you if you'll be happy to do this for me. Because if you give it and then later they decide they want to be yeah. the stingy ones, it's better if you've already talked about it. All advance. right, so be flexible. Molly, thank you for being here. Do appreciate it. Thank you so much for holiday. having me.